This is the bump mapping lesson. Uh, we're going to learn how to create bump maps and displacement maps in this lesson and continue working with the hypershade. Now, um, bump maps will generally not show in your preview window without setting some settings. Uh, but again, the gold standard is always the render. So you can use textures to create what appears to be a tangible surface. Um, bump mapping allows you to create the illusion of what a surface would feel like if you could touch it. And this is just a trick of light. There's no change in the geometry when you do a bump map. So to get started, let's create a sphere. And we're going to right click and assign new material. And we're going to do Fong. And we'll call this Bump. So there's going to be a bump map on every material uh, just about that you can create. Def all the basic ones will have a bump map. And uh, again, you can click on that little checkerboard to map any image as a bump. Uh, in this case, uh, we're going to do a fractal bump. And what this does is creates an image that is again generated by math and again you don't have to know what the math is now like I said this won't show up in the viewport by default but when you render it you will see it so if you want to see it in the viewport you want to click on textures right here so you can see how it has an appearance of kind of a bumpy surface. The geometry, as you can see, has not changed. Uh, the control you might want to play with for, for, um, for starters is bump depth, which is um, at, starts at one, which is really, that's, that's too much in my view. Um, probably 0.25 is a good place to start. One is pretty extreme. This value can be inverted, by the way, and you can give it a negative value that bumps inward. That's not going to make much difference with a fractal, but um, with an image that'll make that'll make it appear inverted. And under the fractal settings you can, for example, change the amplitude and that kind of reduces the extremities of the bump. Again, I'm not going to give you any formulaic explanation of these settings other than to say just play with them until it until it looks the way you want it to look. And that's usually the running theme. So you can get a lot of different looks um, with these image generators, these fractal images, so. So just be aware. I'm going to open the Hypershade window under Rendering Editor's Hypershade. And I'm going to talk about this window a little bit more and why you need it. Um, some of this you have seen before, uh, 
but let me show you a little bit more about this window. I'm going to expand it a little bit. And let's see here. I'm going to go to my bump surface that I made, and I'm going to right click on this and go to graph network. So that gives us the nodes that are involved in creating this surface. Each one is a step in creating the look that's created here. So it starts off with a placement and then there's a fractal image being generated. And that goes into a utility node called bump so that it takes those pixels and makes it bump. And then that goes into, this is the primary um, attributes for the bump shade, so color, ambient color, um, all that good stuff. It's basically the same thing as you see here. And then this is a shader group. You don't have to mess with this or really do anything with it this semester other than know that it's there. So we're going to do some playing with these nodes eventually. But again, just reiterating that they're there. Um, you can click on the bump node, for example, if you want to edit the bump values, like the depth. And you can click on the fractal node to edit that fractal again if you need to change something later. This is again the same thing as tabbing through in the um, attribute editor. Now you'll see those different tabs. They're the same thing as these. Another way to use this window um, might not be easy to understand until you have some experience, um, but you can, for example, um, let's create a, let's say we don't want the fractal anymore. We changed our minds and um, let's go to, under 3D textures, I'm going to go to Brownian and that will create this, basically the same thing we see here. It's a 3D texture, so there, it will have a 3D placement node. And what I can do is I can select the connection between Fractal 1 and Bump 2D and just delete it to break the connection. And then I can middle click on Out Alpha on the Brownian and take that over to bump value. And then that will, there we go. As you can see, that creates a bump value. The Brownian is a bit bigger scale. I'm going to try scaling it down some. Let's see if that helps. Nope, not what I'm looking for. Let's edit the values then. I'm going to bring up the lacanarity and the octaves. Just playing with these a little bit. And so, and I know that there's a way to scale it down, but whatever. I think you get the idea. The main point I was trying to make is just how to reconnect the different nodes.
it's got kind of a funky look to it, but you know, let's you know, if I don't like it, I can always just disconnect that and change it back to fractal one. And you can do a lot of stuff with this basic concept. It does take a while to get your head around it, though. Now, I'm going to do an IPR render, which is called an interactive preview. And I can select a segment of that preview that was just right next to the regular render button that we've been using and once you select a segment then it will refresh that as you're working so I can go back to hypershade and let's say Oh, just for fun, I'll put the out value, the out alpha into the, I'll plug it into the um, well, let's make that, let's try out color. I'll plug that into the transparency value. And part of this will become transparent. The bump works on pixels the white pixels bump up to 100% and the black pixels um, I don't know if the black pixels go down or if they're at zero, if they're at level either the gray pixels are at level and the black pixels go down or the black pixels are level and then everything goes up um, with a transparency basically the um, the white pixels are transparent and the black pixels are opaque. I hope that's right. <laughs> Let's see if I'm... It's either that or the other way around. Yeah, so black is opaque and then if I make it transparent, if I make it mostly white, then it's mostly going to be transparent. As you can see. And there's a lot of things in Maya that work on this basic idea. Now again, if you want to change the basic attributes that we've already learned, of course, there they are. You can easily do that. That's just on the, uh, the primary bump node. Um, maybe bump wasn't the best choice for this material because it's going to be a confusing thing to say. So let's call it purple glass. Okay, so that's on the primary purple glass node. So I say that because there's other nodes called bump. Um, now, on the subject of displacement mapping, displacements are different because, let's assign new material, it does change the geometry. Basically, the opposite of, um, well, not the opposite, but it's, it's like a bump map, but it actually changes the geometry. Displacements are useful for adding details that would be too time-consuming to model. Bump maps are good for textures um, that don't really need to change the geometry, like if something's far away from the camera, or if it's just like a textured stone surface, or something like that. 
Uh, but displacement maps are good for when the surface should actually change and move in a different direction. Okay, so I'm going to create a new material here and we're going to call it, um, I'm not going to call it displacement, I'm going to call it um, planet, I guess. And I'm going to create a color for that. And I could fiddle with this a lot, but I'm not going to. It's just going to be a flat green planet. And we're going to go back to the Hypershade. Open that up. And I can clear this out, I thought, by right-clicking on the... No, you can just, all you have to do is just map this again. So click on Planet and Graph Network. That's all you have to do. In the Hypershade now, click on the Shading Groups tab and double click the Shading Groups swatch to open the Attribute Editor for the shading group. And we're on Blin here, so we're going to double click that. And we're going to click on the displacement material on the little checkerboard. The displacement shader nodes will appear um, and connect to Blin 1 SG. Um, I'm going to put it on file. And there's our shader. And let's click on the file node so we can set the file. And I'm going to choose test pattern. And let's do a render. So there it is displaced and it's going to have some possible issues and the reason for that is because um, low resolution on the polygons. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to do a smooth mesh and I'm going to give it three divisions. And then this is going to take a while to render but I will render it. Well, not necessarily a while, but it's going to take a little time. So the difference in what's happening here as opposed to a bump map is that it's actually changing the geometry. And you can bake this in. Um, and you can increase the sample rate if you're not getting enough detail. Let's see, where's the displacement shader? Nope. If the <clears throat> if the displacement is not changing, in other words, it's not animated, it's easier to convert the displacement to to polygons. So I'm going to do modify convert displacement to polygons. For any surface after estimating the sampling rates you can use the create texture uh, create texture reference object tool to create a mesh. This mesh is made from the displacement tessellation. If not enough texture is included, try e increasing the initial sample rate. If the mesh is too jagged, try increasing the initial sample rate and the extra sample rate. Um, a lot of times it helps just to uh, 
just to smooth out and have plenty of geometry to work with. So, and this is going to create a duplicate object, by the way. This is the original sphere, and this one is the displaced sphere. So anyway, you can see how, as opposed to a bump, the displacement is actually changed. And again, this is where the where the image has white, it's going up, and where it has black, it's going down. So, and a lot of times it works that way. I'll show you the, the image in Photoshop real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. And let's go to Documents, Documents, Maya. projects. There we go. Remember all of your input images go in source images. Images is just for renders. So any reference, any um, textures, anything like that, it all goes into source images. So this will be, for, a dis for the purposes of a displacement map, it will be converted to black and white. and then it will be pushed up or down according to the value of the uh, the grayscale value of each individual pixel. So again, I'll take a look at that and then take a look at that. So, and then bump maps work the same way basically except that it's just a trick of light. It doesn't actually it doesn't actually change the geometry. So,